Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Jan Ferguson. I'm a sociologist. And today, I'll tell you five human stories. Five human stories with an artificial intelligence at work. For two years now, I've been working with a huge French company in order to prepare its employees to work with artificial intelligence in a few years. Um, above all, I help them to express what they feel about working with artificial intelligence in the future. Because we all have feelings about artificial intelligence. Well, first of all, and there is this word, intelligence. This is very, very hard to explain it scientifically. It doesn't mean nothing. But as a species, we used to think that the reason, uh, intelligence is the reason why we are the master of a planet. So what may happen if something, something intelligent, maybe more intelligent than we are, appears? Are we going to lose or crown? Are we going to suffer like other species suffer from our intellectual superiority? Because this is not a very pleasant, situa pleasant situation for other species. Because we are not very kindness masters. So we are a little bit afraid of what will happen to us. About jobs now. We also have bad feelings about jobs. According to Karl Marx, uh, we are the only species who produce his own livelihood, his own means of subsistence. So that could mean that we are a walking species. So what may happen if something, something intelligent, maybe more intelligent than we are, appears? What are we going to become as a species? Because it could be a part of what we are. We already know that maybe the two worst moments in someone's life are losing people you love and losing your jobs. So that brings us to my first human story, the replaced human story. That may happen when it would seem that artificial intelligence is better than humans. In 2030, a very important publication uh, estimated that uh, almost 50% of uh, the American active population may lose its job. Maybe 50% of the Ameri of, um, American job will be destroyed by a new generation of machines. 50%. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Give him a smile. That may be you and him. Since I was born in 1980, uh, in France, uh, there is a little bit more than 10% of the active population which is unemployed. And this is our biggest problem, with strikes, maybe. But this is, uh, every president promised that they will find the solution, but they failed. So what I learned is that it's very difficult to live together when a large part of the population is unemployed. The two researchers of this publication use what we call an occupation-based approach. That means that the studies technologies, they know for sure that they will be better than humans and very soon. So according to them, when uh, artificial intelligence is better than humans, it destroys all the occupation, all the job. So many researchers disagree with this approach because they say that there are many ways to do the same occupation. Let me give me an example. I am a sociologist, and some of my colleagues use what we call quantitative methods. That means they use mathematics, uh, statistics, to discover strong social laws. As a sociologist, I use what we call qualitative approach. It means that I live with people, I interview them, I observe them. So it's quite easy to understand that the artificial intelligence won't have the same impact 
between those two kinds of researchers. The other researchers use what we call a task, a task approach method. That means we try, they try to identify um, which part of a job will go to the robot and which one of a job will go to the humans for the same job. So that leads them to another kind of result. They say that some, around 10% of current job will be destroyed by machine. But 50% of current job will be deeply transformed by the machine. So look at your neighbor again. Give him a smile, but maybe you or him. That leads us to my other stories, working with artificial intelligence. The first story of working with arti artificial intelligence is the augmented human. Since the flint and the sharper and the stone age, uh, we use tools. And tools help us to offset our weakness, physical, or physical weakness. So it looks like we are a tool-using animal. Tools uh, may be a part of what we are as a species. Of course, artificial intelligence uh, is not the same kind of tools, but let me, give you two, uh, let me give you an example. Take two carpenters. Uh, the first one with tools, and the second one with nothing. Of course, the first one will be better than the second one because it's really easier to ship woods with tools. But now, give the same set of tools to the both of them. What will make the difference between them? Maybe the ability of using it. Maybe the ability of being one with it. But maybe also your ability, the ability of having new ideas, the ability, the ability of solving problems, the ability of working with other people. So this is what we call the bottleneck to automation. Bottleneck to automation means special skills that the artificial intelligence won't be able to steal from us in the future. So here we are. Dexterity, perception, creativity, transversal know-how, problem solving, uh, relational intelligence, and adaptability. But for the moment, we people have difficulties to think about the augmented human. They are more afraid of being dominated by artificial intelligence. So that leads us to my third story the dominated human. When I use my car, I have a wonderful machine called a GPS. It has a wonderful, sweet lady's voice. Turn on right, turn on left, have a break, take care. And I used to obey her because it's very simple. But sometimes, sometimes I feel it's wrong. I feel there's a better route and there's a dilemma. What am I going to do? Obey the machine or listen to my intuition? And oftenly, I listen to the machine. And sometimes it's wrong. And I said, you silly machine. I scream at it. But who is silly? The machine of a driver who listened to it, who listened it, uh, to it without thinking by himself. So in the future, we may have many GPS in our jobs. We will, maybe we will feel we will have to obey it. And sometimes uh, we think it is wrong. So what are we going to do? The more we will obey the machine, the more you, we will be dominated by the machine. The more we will feel, we will follow uh, our instinct or our intuition, the more we will feel in danger. What will happen if I am wrong? Or, and, and at the same time, it appears that the artificial intelligence was right. What will happen to me? Few people will be able to mix things together, a part of the machine suggestion and the part, a part of me.
The problem is that you need a strong education to be able to mix it. So that leads us to my first story, the divided humanity. In the Western world, uh, the problem, the main problem, is what we call polarization of a society. The middle class is getting power and power. So tomorrow, um, my wife, living in Toulouse, in France, uh, won't go to the downtown because it's very dangerous. Because for the tenth time of the year and, and the year before, uh, every weekend there will be very violent clashes. This is what we call the gilet jaune, the yellow jacket. So the polarization of a society leads us to this situation. My family can, can't go to downtown tomorrow. In Great Britain, that leads to Brexit. And in the US, uh, that leads to uh, Donald Trump. Artificial intelligence uh, may increase this polarization. Why? Because as I said previously, um, very few people will, could afford such a strong education, such uh, like, like a PhD, for, for instance. So that could lead us to what Harari uh, called um, a social gap between human gods and a new class. Not the middle class, not the lower class, but the useless class. So this is a dystopian scenario. Fortunately, my last story is a little bit more optimistic. This is the rediscovery of the specifically human, the humanized human story. In the company I work with, uh, they are accountants. And a lot of them wanted to change the job. They wanted to stop being accountants. Why? Because six hours a day, they answer it to emails. And that was always the same kind of emails, very simple emails. So they were able to be an accountant only two hours a day. So the artificial intelligence team of this company created with them a chatbot. A chatbot is a robot who is able to answer to uh, the simple question. And it works. Now, they can't they can be accountants six hours a day. They still answer emails two hours a day, but these are uh, interesting emails, complex situation. We can say that the chatbot uh, remove the robot out of the body of the accountants. And we all have a robot in our body for routine tasks, uh, for instance. So this is the social promise of artificial intelligence. Remove the robot out of a body. Artificial intelligence could also help us to take a little bit more care of each other. That could help us to rediscover um, people around us, to work together. This is what Bill Gates uh, says, said it will be uh, an opportunity to rediscover human empathy. And if artificial intelligence automate, automate um, some tasks, some jobs, um, we will have more people for jobs like uh, um, care professions or education. But artificial intelligence may also give us time to work together, to create together, to cooperate. If you want to have your own plane, and if you want to build it alone, uh, you may be dead before you finish it. And even if you finish it, you won't have a right to use it. In 1960, uh, in Europe, um, very few people wanted to make planes. And they created an association to make a small plane uh, they imagine that this plane was, will be like a bus, a bus between uh, European cities. So they call this association Airbus. Later, this association became a huge European company. And now, 
they are able to make more than two planes a day. So that could mean that as a species, we are uh, very good at cooperation. We are really good at it. So that also means that as a species, we have an ultra sociability property. We are an ultra social species. You can look at your neighbor for the last time and give him a smile. <laughs> this is what you are, an ultra social species. To conclude now, the species we want to be. Uh, since the beginning uh, of this presentation, I keep talking about technological impact. And technological impact uh, is a passive posture. Having a social project with artificial intelligence is an active posture. Let me give you two principles of what uh, this social project could be. My first principle is a technological one. In 1960, the very famous writer Asimov uh, created a world where robots and humans live together. It was possible because there were three laws embedded in uh, the robot's code. We call it the three laws of robotics. So that leads us to a concept, ethics by design. Ethics by design means that the values of a society are embedded in the code. So that could mean that if you want to create a program which will help you to recruit someone, it won't be able to eliminate a woman candidacy just because she is a woman. It won't be able to underarrest a black just because he is black. This is what ethics by design means. This is a technical principle of a social project. The other principle uh, could be a social one. This is inclusive artificial intelligence. Uh, for the moment, people working on artificial intelligence, well, they are a little bit like me. They are men, they are white, they are young, they are sexy, well, he is the sexy one, uh, and they have a strong education. These are not bad guys, but they are only a smart part of the population. They have opinions, and their opinions depend on their sociological profile. Maybe you know Cathy O'Neill. Cathy O'Neill is a very famous data scientist, and she said that algorithms are opinions embedded in code. That means that if we let this guy and his friends walking alone on artificial intelligence, they will reproduce their opinions. The program they will reproduce their vision of a society. This is a serious situation because we need diversity. Life needs diversity. Life makes, um, diversity makes life more resistant and more adaptative. But we also need diversity for the society. Um, diversity leads to complexity. Complexity leads to civilization. And often, oftenly, civilization leads to democracy. So artificial intelligence needs diversity too. It needs diversity to be, to be more strong. Artificial intelligence needs diversity to be uh, more sustainable. And artificial intelligence needs diversity to be more fair. Thank you very much.